the best place to write is here. The best person to write is you. Oh. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I um, I'm going to read to you the basic idea of what the sword fight is, so that you have a sense of you know, like so you'll get totally confused later on. Um, and this is also on the writingnightspress.blogspot.com if you wanted to actually read it there too. So you might picture a poetry slam mixed with a rap battle, mixed with a comedy slash storytelling session, mixed with a UFC fight, mixed with a WWE show, and you'll get the idea. Call it ultimate writing or mixed literary arts. We're talking to, we're taking two competitors, putting them up one one against another in a three round battle of wits and words with flavor and a little bit of trash talk scattered around them. Yeah. Each competitor portrays a character that is whatever they want to be. Competitors can wear masks or costumes, they can turn their personalities up to 11 and blow the audience away with theatrics, or they can portray high and mighty arrogance looking down on their opponents. Fighters can have entrance music or elaborate video accompaniments to the stage. They can have managers and ballets. The competitors can be hero, villain, anti-hero, wild card, or brave. Whatever they want to bring to the stage is up to them. So the basics are of the three rounds of performance. We are going to have a four-minute round, which is two minutes per fighter. There's going to be a six-minute round that is three minutes per fighter. And eight, the eight minute round is four minutes per fighter. And fighters are welcome to stick to the theme of the event or totally blow it away, you know, up to them. Um, and you, fighters can present as many pieces as they want during their round. For example, if you wanted to squeeze 80 haiku into two minutes, you could totally do that. <laughs> I really would, would like to see that. That'd be amazing. Yes. <laughs> fighters can bring any style of words they want to the fight. They can bring poetry, rap, comedy, storytelling, or a mix of any of these and beyond. And I would kind of also like to see two essayists go against each other. No improvisation is required, but you can improv if you want to. And you're also not required to memorize. And there's also no musical accompaniment. And um, unlike some slam things, um, there actually is no grace period for the time. So when you're done, you're just done. At, at ten, 10 seconds till the end, I will knock on something, and then you'll know you have 10 seconds left. And so the judges have already been briefed on the scoring, but basically um, it's, a, it's a 10 point system, so if the winner of the round gets 10 points, the loser has to get 9 points or less. And if the judge cannot decide between the two, they, must, they may award both fighters a 10, but this should be very rare. Um, Despite the use of characters and personas, all scores given are legitimate and will determine future storylines. So, I should introduce our judges this evening. We have Tori. Give it up for Tori. Woo! And give it up for Molly. Woo! It is hard to have a competition without some sort of judges, so we appreciate that you've decided to get your judgy faces on and, and do this thing with us. Okay, let's see, where am I in this? Um, uh, in this okay, corner. So, yes, in this corner, way in, on the purpose of purpose, on the meaning of meaning, author of We Are Made of Found Objects, and writing night's own break law to break law, the procrastinator in chief, the Buddha of bullshit. Your loudmouth liberal friend on Facebook, please welcome J.M. Roman! <laughs> and in this corner, not really corner, more of a space, uh, weighing in at 20 pounds, five and a half by five inches weight, that's printer paper, champion of unwritten chapbooks, patron saint of passionate assonance, and queen of emotional quandaries, all the way in the exotic city of Akron, Ohio. Please welcome Jamie Lovander! <laughs> and for, you know, numbers sake, it's really great if we would have a third judge. So is oh. there? Oh, oh, we have yeah, a volunteer. So I'm going to be uh, me. <laughs> wait, 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 wait,
They give you, they tell you you're going to be out for this long, and then you only end up being out, end up being out for half of it. Woo! Yay, recovery! Woo! So, I mean, these, these kind of things happen, and you know, if there's an empty seat, and I'm the most qualified person here to take that seat. So, you know, I, I wouldn't go that far. See, I, as a judge, I do have to be impartial, and I mean, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but. See, I already know who I want to win, <laughs> and they better win, because I don't associate with losers. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm about to get on with this, right? All right, so we're going to get on with it, as, as we do. Um, we're going to do a coin flip to see who goes first. Azrael has a coin. Here's a coin. Okay. Um, let's see here. So, whoever goes first in round one, Go second in round two, and then third in round three. No, that's not the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> and then we give another point flip for round three. <laughs> All right, so who wants to call it? All right, do my hands or tails? Tails. Okay. It is tails. Oh. All right, so Jamie's going to go first. Give up for Jamie. Oh. All right. All right, so one now. Round one is two minutes for each fighter. And there's an optional thing on here, too. Like, just, just start. Oh, okay, this is for after that. Okay, got it. Oh. Sorry. This is making me, too. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties. There you go. Okay, so Jamie is going to be first in this round. And I think, as soon as Azrael is able to find a stopwatch on there, Go, okay, go back to the main screen and then push clock. <laughs> okay. yeah. Clock, yeah. cool. clock, and it should already be up. Yes. Okay. All right. Please welcome Jamie! Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. So, just for the record, is the, is the clock going right now? No. Okay. I'm Because I figured that first time we wouldn't be that stringent. Okay. So, just tell me when you're ready to start. And I'll start. I'm ready when you are. Okay. Go. Lifestyle vlogs. Holy, holy focused, hocus pocus style incantations or meditations. Self medicating with the mint and ginger ground on my kitchen, counteracting the stinging left in my eyes when I turn off my computer every night. These are the things I try. Mornings I keep quiet, search my lawn for leftover scraps of midnight. Race the light rising over the hill. Harness as much intention as my dopamine-deprived mind can muster towards manifesting something. Something like a sonnet or a new soup recipe pieced together from whatever resisted molding in my fridge. <laughs> I live in fear of not living enough. Grasp at lifestyles and straws and some coveted feeling of fulfillment I'm half convinced is only a fantasy but I have to keep tailoring myself into something because thoughts left untrimmed grow thorns. So I list off nutrition facts, the life preferences of differing houseplants, the metaphysical traits of crystals, names of authors I may or may not have read, a litany invoked before bed each night in the hope of rising again tomorrow, feeling better and more and more and more. Oh, poor Atlas. Our love was a beast of burden on your shoulders, so I've heard. Man who thinks himself a mystic chose the wrong man. Mm -hmm. No, Atlas, there was only Echo, crying your name over and over until she faded. A note can only sound so long when strings are no longer plucked. Man who thinks himself a musician didn't understand why the song ended, was surprised to learn it was written as a duet. What is it to walk out of a haunted house? What is it to walk out of a fog towards something solid? Who wouldn't need a string to guide them out of a labyrinth but they've been led to the middle and left? You see, my dear. Right. Although Josh is not going to do the same thing, is he? What? You're not going to go over time. 
No, 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 from this overtime. 50 hours this week still won't make ends meet, let alone put a dent in my debt. But the boomers I work with won't let me forget that my generation got participation trophies. Oh, please, spare me. I can't even with you, so I won't. I'm entitled, you say. <laughs> you get to retire, I don't. I've been 34 years in these bones, and it's going to take 79 more to pay off my student loans. But I'm still beating my feet against the concrete floor, still breaking myself and asking for more, still scraping by with the help of a roommate, my parents, or a side hustle or four. I'm getting too old for all this running around. I can't play. Shit's different now. I don't even know the game anymore. I mean, people selling shit on Facebook now. What happened to eBay? <laughs> or word of mouth? The heck is a Snapchat? The fuck is a cash app? I can't keep up. I've been out. And phones are all touch screens now, can't even fit them in my pocket. What is this? Man, I miss my sliding keyboard. Oh. Woo! I also miss my sliding keyboard. <laughs> Very much. Who's in their 30s here? Right? Isn't it beautiful? 
how it constantly seems to be on the verge of falling apart, but somehow manages to hold itself together. You see, I am all American. The best part of that was Jamie's look on her face when the sign was falling down. The wall got tired of it. Coffee at 11 p.m. on a Saturday night before. 
were teaching Sunday school the following morning. Sitting across from you in our McDonald's, watching your left eye twitch, you look so tired. It's lonely being scary, you say, and ruffle up your mohawk shaven hair and smack your pack of Marlboros against the table. You tell me about the dirty looks you got from the woman buying lottery tickets at the Circle K down the street. She cashed in her tickets for more tickets and acted like I want to eat her kid. I count the piercings in your face and sigh. We were both raised under the umbrella of her disapproval. Glares, curfews, silence at dinner, silenced in church. But I set up my house behind their lines while you hit the street like the lightning they were always afraid you would become. They never really knew what to look for. Their sight sharpened when their hearing failed. Your character never changed, but you're closed dead. Everyone needs to stop, you say. You're tired. You're a shattered Molotov cocktail, but I don't mind standing, I don't mind stepping around the glass because I know you were almost a message in a bottle. Almost a voice to save us all. There's some glue in my back pocket, but I don't think it'll work on you, kid. I can only balance on the lines and tell myself that this is where I'm needed. Mediators are hard to come by here, and who wants to be out of a job? I'm a rumble, not a flash like you are, but who else would follow in your wake to voice the thoughts you never thought through before you ran too fast and hit the ground? I'd love to strike the lines and turn the power out with you. Town-wide blackout, riot. But one of us has got to survive. And I am less suspicious to them anyway. You smack your pack of Marlboros against the table. I count every piercing in your face and sigh. I've become the girl who orders decaf. <laughs> Washer dryer hookups. My used underwear and towels swirl shamelessly behind glass for the world to see, sudsy, come to a slow grinding halt, smell like the same detergent your mother always used. While they dry, recall a day to the laundromat, dating back to when what I wore wasn't governed by what was still clean, by whether I had free time on a weekend, back when people were still worth impressing and I kept up with their pace. Count the quarters, as if we would ever not have enough. Divide them between us and our little plastic cups. You'll remember it as novelty, not necessity, when we played at the aesthetic of a lifestyle that would eventually become all I could afford around each month's rent. Back when it felt like an expansion of self to take in the piles of other people's pants, the fish swimming across the 20-year-old wallpaper border and adventure. You were so bent on wanting to feel poor or important, whatever you thought would give your thoughts weight and movement and make your music matter, on appearing and attached to the same material things that made this experience so unique, so singular. How sufficient for a man whose mother still washes his socks for him. How other. <laughs> Recall the luxury of extra coins for pop and chips from a vending machine that actually worked. One book each. A whole beautiful, unbothered day ahead of us and vibration. The washing, drying rhythm, constant and gentle. A steady train taking us somewhere we still thought we wanted to go. Time's relentless march forward. And I wonder, 
what the Earth like, looks like from the point of view of a comet sprinting toward it, just two celestial bodies fated for collision in 20 billion tomorrows. I think about humanity in those early days and about how suddenly we went from hunting wild beasts with sticks and stones to hunting pizza with mobile phones, from gathering in caves and makeshift uh, huts to, uh, to watch fire flicker and make children to gathering on couches in living rooms to binge watch Netflix and make children. I look up at the sky, at all of the stars, and think, how many of those died long ago, and how long will it take for us to get the memo? And despite all of this deep time thinking, I fail to stop myself from looking down. You see, nothing has changed. Not a minute slips by as I sit here and fidget, just awaiting your reply. Everything to finish rated. The newly empty hoarder's house feels lonely. There are clean squares of carpet marking where the boxes were obsessively stacked in neat high towers. And the backyard is full of rain ruined childhood keepsakes, blurry photographs of ghosts, and too many boxes of ink bleeding love letters never sent. The highways are littered with stories of what could have been shattered on the cruel asphalt of this stubborn perpetual now. We are all the victims of nostalgia cobbling together a makeshift self from what remains of who we were yesterday, but memory is often misremembered, and history is a book with too many missing chapters and unreliable narrators. Despite our best efforts, we are not at all good at keeping things. The newly emptied hoarder's house feels hopeful. See, the foyer uh, is, no, is no longer unusable. You can breathe and not gag on a thick atmosphere of ammonia. The front yard has freshly cut grass for the first time in forever. We can see where a garden can grow. There's a swing set out there with chains that are rusted from years of neglect, uh, but we know it's not unfixable. Nothing is unfixable. We are all survivors of the past, given a choice every day about what to keep and what to throw away. And who we are, uh, and who we are today, and what relationship we have with the things left on the endless road behind us. Tomorrow, it's a terribly, terrifyingly white page, a terrifyingly perfect white page screaming at us, daring us to make some kind of mark upon it. Take up the challenge, make new, but remember as you do that we are not at all good at keeping things because things aren't meant to be kept. Send your love letters while there is still love in them. You see, the, newly, the newlyweds' first home feels like possibility.
So if we could have our two sword fighters. Oh, I up. also want to mention something. Also want to mention something. <laughs> that literally everyone who did not trip on the sword this evening is a winner. So we have our scores for the split decision of 30, 26, 29, 28, and 28, 29. The winner of our first ever sword fight, Jamie Lawbacher. Yeah. I just like the word. Is it right? 
I love how the sword fight has generated into a workshop session. <laughs> <laughs> That's how poets compete. I know, right? <laughs> And, and that's totally awesome because the, the whole point was never to be all like, you suck. It was like, we can all be awesome. So thank you all very much. Give us give everybody a round of applause. I think Daria has a word. I do. It says Daria makes open challenger for August. August. <laughs> I'm still waiting to hear the name of this supposed challenger I will be facing in my debut match here in the uh, sword fighting league. So, uh, Azrael, you not, not, not confirmed yet. You've not no, confirmed yet. No, that, that's, that's, unfortunate. Why, that's, why open, that's, why that's unfortunate because you see, I mean, I, I know that uh, last month uh, Yoli was running her mouth a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it didn't, it didn't get, a lot of it didn't end up getting on camera, but all of us were a little tongue-tied that night. That happens. Um, I would be very happy to give JL another chance to redeem himself, if that is uh, what he'd be interested in. I am also interested in fixing up with the winner here. I, uh, I, came, I came here to play, and I didn't come here to play with Scrubs. Ooh! Oh, <laughs> I want the bus. I want the bus. And uh, Yoli, if you can hear me at home, uh, I mean you too, lady. <laughs> so. All right, so you heard it here. There's an open call out to challenge Daria in uh, August, so that might be one of us. So, um, I think, yeah, we have just one last thing to do that this evening, and that, well, in addition to buying stuff back there, you know, because there's all kinds of poetry books and there's stuff that I made by hand, we're also going to have an open mic! Woo! All right. So, how many people might be interested in open mic game? Uh, all right, it's we not have a couple. Yeah, the open mic is right. not recorded. So yes, if our competitors would like to, you know, join the rest of the audience, if they're more comfortable there, 